Hey everyone, it's Jonathan and I'm back with another quarantine review. Today I'm going to be talking about Onward, the Pixar film of this year. Well, the first one. As far as I know, we're still getting a second one, but it's been moved to later this year. We'll see what happens. <laughs> the movie industry is kind of a mess right now. Nobody knows when anything is coming out. But regardless, we had one this year, Onward, and it received mixed reviews and didn't do well at the box office before the whole pandemic thing happened and kind of killed its chances. If it had chances, because people are debating whether or not it would have made money anyway. Um, I think it probably would have eventually, but it would have a harder time because my feelings about this movie are very similar to most people's feelings in that it was fine. I liked it. It was better than your average animated movie from any other studio, but it's Pixar. So even Pixar's worst movie is still great, in my opinion. And it was good. It was a really good movie. It just had a whole lot of problems that I think probably should have been worked on a little bit before it was released. Um, I guess my biggest problem with it, and this is very nitpicky, but other people have mentioned this too, and it stood out to me, is the fact that there was... the world building was just off. Like, I thought of this, and I've seen other people make the same comparison, but with Zootopia, you had this whole world that was built for all these different species of animals, and everything was made so that everything could be used by everyone. Like, everything is tailored to the specific animals, and everything works together really well. And that is not the case with Onward. You're in this world where there's all these magical creatures of various sizes, and everything is built for basically humans. There are no humans in this movie, so I suppose elves. It just, it felt weird, especially with the mom's centaur boyfriend. Like, he couldn't even fit in his car, and that just annoyed me so much every time he was struggling to get in his car. And I'm like, why isn't there a car for him that fits him? He's a police officer. It just, it really bothered me. And that just took me out of the movie every time that there was some weird thing happening that could have been fixed by having something tailored to the specific character's size. And I know they're probably doing it for comedic effect. And I guess I get that. But I don't know. I expected more from Pixar, I guess, than just funny jokes about sizes of characters. I don't know. That just, that was my biggest nitpick, I guess. That and Chris Pratt, his character annoyed me for a lot of the film, right up until the big reveal about his past and his relationship with his father, which made everything make a whole lot more sense. So I, that stopped, he stopped bothering me after that. I don't want to make it sound like I hated the film, because I definitely didn't. I did enjoy this film. I thought it was really creative. I really enjoyed seeing all the different magical creatures interacting in various ways in the world. I just wish, like I said, that that could have been done a little bit better, but I did enjoy the creativity behind that. I thought that they made the backstory to the world make sense. I know people like to pick that apart too, but it made sense to me. The thing that really made the movie work, I guess that's the end. <laughs> The end of this movie was just so good. Like, even though, for the most part, I thought it was fine for, for most of the movie, once you get the reveal about Chris Pratt's character's past and everything starts coming to a head with the final battle, I guess. <laughs> There's not really a bad guy, but there is sort of a battle at the end. And everything comes together with the dad in such a way that I thought was brave of Pixar to do and I just I thought it worked so well I thought it was really emotional and really well written really well thought out the end was more well written and more well thought out than the rest of the movie and even though the whole movie wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be the end sort of made up for it and in the end I did really enjoy the movie but like it's Pixar so 
that I don't think there's any Pixar movie that I dislike. Even though this isn't top tier Pixar, I think it was great anyway. So I guess take that for what it's worth. I think the movie is now streaming on Disney Plus, so if you have Disney Plus, you can check it out. I think it's worth watching. It had problems, but what movie doesn't? Okay, I think that's all for now. I'm probably going to try and do some streaming movies after this. I feel like I saw other movies at the beginning of the year, but a bunch of the ones that I saw in the theater I was catching up with last year's movies, so I haven't decided if I want to do quarantine reviews on those or not. But after this, I think I'll probably switch over and do some streaming reviews. Like I said, The Willoughby's is coming to Netflix this week. It may already be out. I may do that one first, but I know there's some other ones. There was Timmy Failure on Disney Plus and Shaun the Sheep. That was on Netflix. That I also want to talk about. So there's stuff coming up. There's not as much as there would be if I was going to the theater, but there's still stuff to talk about. So when I get a chance, I'll probably do one of those next. So I'll see you then. Bye.